In the beginning, we read Genesis 2.15. And Jehovah God took the man and put him into the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it, to tend it, to work it, to cultivate it. And then in Genesis 3, 17 through 19, we learn, And to Adam he said, Because you have hearkened unto the voice of your wife, and have eaten of the tree, of which I commanded you, saying, You shall not eat of it, cursed is the ground for your sake. In sorrow shall you eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to you, and you shall eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of your face you shall eat bread, till you return unto the ground, for out of it you were taken, for dust you are, and unto dust you shall return. Isn't it ironic that the man was designed to cultivate, to work the ground that he is actually made out of? Yes, he will be a farmer, a tiller of the ground, a sower of seed, a reaper of crops that will provide his physical nourishment. Nonetheless, all these actions will apply also to his body in a physical and spiritual way. In Isaiah 5, we see Yehovah prepares a field to raise his choice vine, Israel, whom he rescued from the bondage of Egypt. In chapter 5, verse 2, And he fenced it, and gathered out the stones thereof, and planted it with the choicest vine, and built a tower in the midst of it, and also made a winepress therein. And he looked that it should bring forth grapes, but it brought forth wild grapes. First, we see that Yehovah fences the land designated. He provides a restricted area for the vineyard to grow. In comparing this to what is called the parable of the sower, we read in Matthew 13, 19, When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, then the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is he who received seed by the wayside. What is a seed? Yeshua tells us in Luke 8.11, The parable is this, the seed is the word of God. If the seed is sown in an unprotected area, Hasatan can gain entrance and steal it away. As it is written in Proverbs 4.23, Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. The word for diligence here is related to the word in Genesis 2 that means to keep the garden. It implies that one must guard over it. In Psalm 101, verse 3, David wrote, I will set no wicked thing before my eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It will not cleave to me. We need to guard against what might try to infest our garden. We need boundaries for protected space. If we want to have good fruit growing from our ground, we must fence it in. We restrict our activities to what nourishes and edifies our spirit man. We must guard our gates, our eyes, and ears from exposure to worldly influence. Concerning the guarding of what enters the garden, both Isaiah and Matthew have written of a tower. Matthew 21.33 Here another parable. There was a certain householder which planted a vineyard and hedged it around about and digged a winepress in it and built a tower and let it out to husbandmen and went into a far country. In addition to fencing the area, the householder built a tower to keep an eye out for what might enter. There is a story of a young man who comes to his rabbi wanting to study Greek philosophy. The rabbi questions him, have you learned Torah? Yes, the young man replies. And Talmud, Mishnah, Gemara? Yes, the young man replies, he has learned all of these. The rabbi then quizzes him, Can you recite for me Psalm 1, verse 1 and 2? The young man recites, Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of Jehovah, and in his law, in his Torah, he meditates day and night. Good, says the rabbi, if you can find a time which is neither day or night, you may study Greek philosophy. The truth is we too often turn to the understanding of the world despite the fact that it is written in 2 Peter 1.3 as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. 
As a second step of preparation, the father gathers the stones out of the set-apart place. What happens if the ground is stony? Matthew 13, 20 and 21. He who receives a seed on stony places, this is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself, but endures only for a while. When tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, immediately he stumbles. Seed cannot flourish in rocky soil. The stones inhibit the plant roots from finding nourishment in the good rich soil, and without roots the plant fades away. For Messiah and his word to come, the way must be made smooth and plain. From Isaiah 40, verses 3 and 4. The voice of him that cries in the wilderness, Prepare the way of Jehovah, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough places plain. And in Isaiah 62.10, it says, Go through, go through the gates, prepare the way of the people, cast up, cast up the highway, gather out the stones, lift up a standard for the people. What happens to the man with the stony heart? 1 Samuel 25.37 and 38. But it came to pass in the morning, when the wine was gone out of Naval, and his wife had told him these things, that his heart died within him, and he became as stone. And it came to pass about ten days after, that Yehovah smote Naval, and he died. This is why we need a new heart, which we are promised in Ezekiel 36:26. A new heart also I will give you, and a new spirit will I put within you, I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. Jeremiah 5.3 O Yehovah, are not your eyes upon the truth? You have stricken them, but they have not grieved. You have consumed them, but they have refused to receive correction. They have made their faces harder than rock. They have refused to return. The stone and the rock imagery carries with it a sense of hardness, the person with the stony heart cannot change his mind or his behavior. This is a fault when it comes to following the commands of Jehovah, and we call it obstinacy. It often describes the children of Israel during their history. Ezekiel 3.7 But the house of Israel will not hearken unto you, for they will not hearken unto me. For all the house of Israel are impudent and hard-hearted. Zechariah 7.12 Yes, they made their hearts as an adamant stone, lest they should hear the law and the words which Jehovah of hosts has sent in his spirit by the former prophets. Therefore came a great wrath from Jehovah of hosts. Isaiah 48, 4 and 5. Because I knew that you were obstinate, and your neck is an iron sinew, and your brow brass. I have even from the beginning declared it to you. Before it came to pass, I showed it to you lest you should say, My idol has done them, my graven image and my molten image has commanded them. Those rocks and stones in our ground do not permit the seed of the word of God to take root in us. In addition to removing the rocks, the weeds and the old roots must be removed. From Mark four eighteen and 19. And these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word, the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lusts of other things entering in choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. 1 John 2.16 For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. We must take time to pull up the old and useless roots that remain in our soil. These are thoughts that compete with the teachings of the Bible as weeds compete with useful plants for needed nutrients. Yeshua explains to us in the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew 6. Therefore I say to you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor for your body, what you shall put on. Which of you by taking thought can add one cubit to his stature? And why do you take thought for raiment? Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you have need of these things. But you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you.
The author of Hebrews also speaks about the roots in our lives. In Hebrews 12:15, looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. So often these useless and non-productive roots of bitterness are related to unforgiveness in our lives. The worry, the worldly thoughts, the unforgiveness conflict with the word of God. They will take up our thinking space and energy, and the word of God will wither and fade from our mind. Now here are some interesting correlations from the Hebrew language. The word for weed in modern Hebrew is esev. It sounds just like the name of Esau, the man who was focused on the cares of this life, opposed to spiritual matters. The process of removing stones and pulling up old roots is called tilling and is accomplished by a plow. One of the Hebrew words for plow is spelled Aleph Tav, which are the equivalent letters that correspond to the Greek Alpha and Omega, one of the titles for Yeshua mentioned in Revelation. Yeshua, by his word, is the plow that tills up our ground, as is written in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in Yehovah with all your heart, and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths. I'll put a link below for the full Aleph Tav teaching if you would like to study that further. Our goal for tilling our personal soil is to produce fruit, which comes from the choice vine which Yehovah plants. Proverbs 12:12. 12, 12. The wicked desire the net of evil men, but the root of the righteous yields fruit. We are given instruction for what this fruit is and how to produce it. Galatians 5:22-23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faithfulness, meekness, and self-control. Against such there is no law. John 15, 5-8 I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abides in me, and I in him, the same brings forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered, and men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. The instructions for establishing a garden and for tending our souls are the same. Again, we review the parable from Luke's Gospel. Luke eight eleven through 15 now the parable is this, the seed is the word of God. Those by the wayside are they that hear, then comes the devil and takes away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. They on the rock are they, which when they hear, receive the word with joy, and these have no root, for a while believe, and in time of temptation fall away. And that which fell among the thorns are they, which when they have heard, go forth, and are choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this life, bring no fruit to perfection. But that on the good ground are they, which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it, and bring forth fruit with patience. First, we want to be sure that our ground is fenced and guarded. We want to guard against stoniness, obstinance, hard-heartedness. We let the word of Jehovah show us how to remove what hinders us. We pull up the weeds, the thoughts for this world with its lusts and pleasures, things that might bring temporary satisfaction to the flesh, but do not last. We take every thought captive. And finally, we will produce good fruit from our ground.